Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. We're in North Carolina in late March, believe it or not, at Pinehurst. And we're with Caleb Miles, who's the president and CEO of the Convention and Visitor Bureau for Pinehurst, Southern Pines, and Aberdeen. <laughs> and what beautiful weather. Michigan people are going to love it when they come here. Well, welcome. And I know it's, it's a mouthful to say Pinehurst, Southern Pines, Aberdeen area. You know what we'll do? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll um, say that, but also the home of American golf. And that's the thing that I think most people think about when they think about this part of North Carolina, because it really has a lot of rich history uh, that people that come and visit here and play golf really appreciate. Well, we've just started to get a taste of some of that history, but the name Donald Ross is certainly one that's associated with golf courses all over the United States, but most certainly here. Let's talk about his role at Pinehurst. Yeah, Don Donald Ross was brought here to, uh, at, at a very young age, to design golf courses. And, you know, it sounds real simple, but back then not many people were designing golf courses. This is in the early 1900s. And the uh, Tufts family from the Boston, Massachusetts area brought him in. He had just come over from Scotland, was doing some work up in Massachusetts. They'd heard about that. They, they invited him down. As kind of the rest they say is history. He is um, attributed to designing somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 plus golf courses throughout the country. And this, but this was his home base. So Piners Number Two, the most uh, famous course in the area, um, is was was his masterpiece and one he tinkered with throughout his entire history, trying to get it just perfect. And of course, back then they designed golf courses with donkeys and drag pans and you know very basic stuff, but which is actually you know very good because the natural lay of the land is what dictated what the golf course was. Well, I know people love to play that course, but there are how many? Eight at Pinehurst, and then there are some at Southern Hills. There are some in Aberdeen. Let's talk about a couple other courses. There are. There are 43 in the area, and, you know, where do you start? It's difficult um, to say a starting point, but let's kind of uh, go down from uh, Pinehurst number 2 down to Southern Pines, and another course that the USGA has selected in the past to hold uh, major events is the Women's Open. was held three years, um, starting in 86 at um, Pine Needles, and Pine Needles is, again, a Donald Ross golf course, and it is uh, owned and operated by the Bell family, so you don't see too many many resorts, you know, owned by families, but it's actually family run, and uh, they started the first golf school for women called uh, Golfaris, and every, this, in fact, they're going on right now, um, and it's a very popular place for golf schools, but also for golf, because Pine Needles is a terrific golf course. Across the street from there is their second property that they um, manage, and that's called Mid Pines, another Donald Ross golf course, so, you know, we've got a lot of Donald, Donald Ross gems here, but also some more modern and contemporary courses. Uh, a course that a lot of people like to play because it's so different is called Tobacco Road. Um, and it's about um, 20 minutes from where we're standing right now. Um, uh, very different kind of layouts. Mike Strantz golf course. So if, if people have, uh, any folks from Michigan have played any of his courses, they know they're in for a real treat. Uh, a lot of kind of blind shots, but fascinating um, um, architecture. Very different from anything else we have here. Well, speaking of golf architecture, I know Tom Fazio, who's a member of the North Carolina Golf Hall of Fame, has done a number of courses in the area. What makes a Tom Fazio course stand out? Well, that's a great question, and um, I think it's, I think it, anyone that comes here and designs a course, the first thing they want to do is make sure that they appreciate where they are, and they're, they're going to use some of their uh, design techniques, but they're really going to uh, take into account the history and tradition, and typically they're not going to do a course um, that has a lot of elements that aren't indigenous to, to North Carolina. So with him, it has to do probably a little more with, with the bunkering and sight lines, and you can kind of tell his course when you play it. But um, I think all of them, like they, most of the golf architects want to uh, open a course or build a course here. Um, Crenshaw, the team of Crenshaw Corps um, just finished a course here. It's going to be private to begin with, but it's another example of a design team that, and they stated in their interviews, they really wanted to design a course here at some point in their career, and now they have. Well, golf is everywhere, but it's not the only thing. And I've got to say one thing about the history that really intrigued me was my childhood hero was Annie Oakley. <laughs> 
and she spent a lot of time here at the Pinehurst Gun Club. What are some of the other things that people are going to find about the history here? Well, that's um, uh, that's a great story with, with Annie Oakley, and there's lots of those. But in terms of you know a visitor coming today to visit. Um, Beyond the golf, what I think most people find really intriguing here is the fact that these, the, the small towns and villages, and that's why in our name we mention Pinehurst, Southern Pines, and Aberdeen, because each one of those towns is different. What you get is you get a very uh, local f feel. You don't have uh, as many of the uh, franchise restaurants, um, you have independently owned restaurants, a lot of unique retail, and a couple of popular things people like doing here is there's a pottery area just north of here um, that has uh, over 100 potters, and you can go into the shop, they'll, they'll, they'll um, show you how they um, uh, actually uh, make the pottery from, from the very beginning, from the indigenous clay, um, and it's a, a great way to spend it, uh, um, you know, a couple days. There's actually a trail that you can Go, go through and some of the pottery here has been featured in the Smithsonian and purchased and in, in, featured in movies and is, can be, has been bought all over the world so that's a popular um, place to go but just kind of exploring the villages and towns is, is very popular as well as some other sports um, tennis, um, biking, mountain biking, uh, road biking is very popular as well and we have to talk about the spa. Yes, there's a terrific spa at Pinehurst Resort, and it, its history goes back to really the origin of uh, the village of Pinehurst, which was really designed initially before golf uh, uh, was even thought of, people coming down from the northeast for, uh, to, to get away in some warmer weather and the municipal value of the pine trees. So pine trees were a whole lot better than that industrial pollution around the big cities, wasn't it? That's right. So, uh, the, but the spa is definitely a place you that for, and you know, it's set up for both men and women. It's 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 great for either. Well, you also have a brand new festival that's just started, that is basically art and literature and music. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's right. It's the um, it's the first year of the Palestrius Festival. That's a hard one. Doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue. That's why I let you say it first. <laughs> it actually it's it's Latin and and and, and it's uh, basically means a pine forest or pine trees, a pine forest. And uh, it's our uh, a new festival that uh, our organization and some others uh, collaborating on. And we've got some terrific um, events, including uh, some uh, f feature um, presentations. Uh, uh, Tiff Merritt, who's a recording artist, a, a Grammy nominee, uh, is going to kind of showcase the event. Uh, uh, but everything from classical music to very, you know, uh, avant-garde music and then a lot of art displays. Uh, they're doing a real interesting um, presentation in Southern Pines and this involves a little bit of a story but when people used to come here in the early 1900s they would come down on the train from the Northeast, they'd get off in Southern Pines and then there was a trolley system that connected Southern Pines and Pinehurst. Well that, when the people got off the train that was a big deal because usually when they come down here they didn't come down for a three-day weekend. They came down here for weeks or months at a time. They probably brought a trunk. That, exactly. A big trunk, so there was actually an actual greeting of um, the folks that, and it was usually involved some music, some acting, and so they're reenacting that. In fact, we didn't even know that much about it, and but there's a gentleman who researched it, and that's going to be taking place at the Palestras Festival as well. So those are kind of things where they're trying to incorporate some history and tradition with a little bit of education. What I'm seeing right now is this is my first trip, but. I see lots of reasons to keep coming back because there's way too much to do. Again, another, another example of that, we just published a book in cooperation with Tufts Archives. It's a walking tour book and it's broken into five different walking tours. There are 300 historic buildings in the village of Piners. We feature 70 to 80 of them, but realistically you're not going to want to see more than 10 or 12 you know, per trip, but it's designed to have you come back and visit those over and over again. The, the village of Piners is a terrific place just to kind of um, get out of your car and walk around and look at the architecture um, so, and, and, and kind of soak up what it's all about. And the weather, it's 25 degrees in southeast Michigan today, but here is what? mid 60s. It is. It's going to be a, a terrific weekend. We've had a great week. Um, just like everybody, the winter's been a little rougher for folks, uh, but um, spring is definitely here. You can see it in uh, the dogwood starting to come out. Uh, the uh, you know a lot of other blooms are starting to, to already happen. So uh, we're we're glad you're here when the weather's great and you can take advantage of all that. Well, thank you very much, Caleb Miles. We look forward to seeing more of Pinehurst, Southern Hills, and Everdeen. Thank you, and we look forward to uh, more folks from Michigan coming down on a regular basis.